In an era where Magic the Gathering cards are reprinted on a regular basis, how can players decide which cards to buy, which ones to spend their hard-earned money on? Well, in today's video, I'm going to give my opinion on a few Magic cards that I think most players should be buying. Are you ready for the Mox Man here to hype up some cards? To convince you to buy certain Magic cards? Well, it's not actually going to happen because in today's video, I'm just giving opinions on some cards I think are worth buying, but I will go through the reasons why I think some of these cards are worthy of being added to your collection. Welcome back everyone, MTG Mox Man here. Thanks again for hanging out with me on the channel today. And of course, if you enjoyed today's content, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Now, this is an old style video format I used to do called Card Watch, where I will bring back or talk about individual cards, modern or reserve list, that I think could be desirable for players or could have future uses. Now, in this case, I'm going to give a lot of opinions on cards that I think are desirable for several reasons, in my opinion only. I would love to hear counterpoints, of course, in the comments comment section and keep that communication going because the more we add to these conversations, the more we can discuss why a card could or could not be used in certain ways. And that will let players get a more diverse opinion base of what could be going on with certain magic cards. So let's start out with card number one. This is Soldevi Digger. This is an alliances card. So why do I think this is a card that players should be buying? Well, number one, it's on the reserve list. We know it's not getting reprinted. We know after 30th anniversary, Wizards of the Coast, the backlash they felt means they are less likely to ever try to reprint reserve list cards in any form because it just didn't go well for the company as a whole. It gives you good peace of mind to know that it may be years and years before they even think of something like that happening again. Now, what does this card do though? Why is it desirable? It's really not as desirable as players think, but there is the possibility after what we saw with the Doctor Who. Now, for those who are unaware, when Doctor Who came out, there was a card. And, and she is also on this list, so I'll add it to the next one. That's River Song. And we'll get into that card in a second. But so Devi Dagger says, put the top card of your graveyard on the bottom of your library. Now, that can stop milling decks. It can stop a certain card from being removed from your deck when you really need it. There's also ways of basically using up your entire deck and getting the exact card you want and making sure you continually draw that exact card. And something like Soldevi Digger really can make that happen for you. Now this card shot up in value when those decks were announced from Doctor Who. One particular card, that's the next card, River Song. It jumped to 15 bucks. There was an initial feel of FOMO. You never want to buy when FOMO is happening. That fear of missing out is a driving factor. People don't realize what they're paying when before we were paying 75 cents a card. So where is this card likely headed? Well, honestly, it's likely headed right back down to 75 cents, and that's why I think it's a good card to buy. You don't have to buy it now. You just gotta add it to a list of cards you want to buy, and when you see it at a reasonable price, a dollar, 75 cents, 50 cents, whatever you think is a good price, that's when you pick up the card. You don't pay at the top of the market. You buy at the bottom of the market when everything settles down and people forget how great this card can be and why it could be utilized. Now, as more cards come around that this card can be you know, kind of tweaked around with and had a little bit of you know, spatial awareness of how great this card can be in certain deck constructions and the way commander players may decide to use it as well as other formats, existing or not existing yet in Magic, this is a card at a low price point that you may desire picking up, at least in my opinion. Now, the next card is River Song. Now, this is the card from Doctor Who that sent the Soldevi Digger to, to, the, to the heights it was at. So why is this a card that I'm mentioning? Well, number one, the price point. It's less than a dollar to buy the card. So what it can do for you for that one dollar you've spent when added with something like Soldevi Digger, which could cost less than a dollar as well, you have some kind of combinations that will work well together. River Song says you draw cards from the bottom of your library rather than the top. So if you have a card on the top of your graveyard that you really want to use and you've got her out and you know you're drawing from the bottom, you can use Soldevi Digger basically to rig your deck to get the exact card you want because you can put that top card of your graveyard on the bottom of your library and you're going to draw it with River Song. There's lots of combinations that people have tried and are using with this. So at a, at a dollar price point, 
Plus, we know everyone's forgotten about Soul Devi Digger and the price is falling. You might be able to get this two card combo for literally $2. That's something that to me is worth buying in my opinion. It's going to be a lot of fun with a low cost basis. Yes, you'll probably get reskinned and reprinted somewhere else, but buying an original and buying one of each copy of the original might be something players want to dive into. I'm not saying it's ever going to be a high priced card. Absolutely not. Look what happened after release, but that's what happens with cards like these. Players forget how great they can be until the next time it's brought to their attention. FOMO kicks in and some people make a lot of money and some people don't. But at least if you have it now, when the next card combination comes around, you'll be able to utilize that combination and not have to worry about FOMO at all because you already own the card. Let's take a look at the next one here. Let's dive in here. This is Mind Over Matter from Exodus. Uh, reserve list card. And I want you to pay attention to the spikes you see here. Um, it had its first spike 2018. You know, it went up to like 50, 60 bucks. Dropped down 2021. The thing went over 100. Dropped right down. Now, it's never going back to its original level. You see, it's kind of like a stepping ladder. Goes up, goes up, goes down, goes down. It is dropping again right now because players have forgotten about it. So, mind over matter. What does this, what does this do for us? And let's look at the price point. $50. This is a more expensive card. This is going to cost a few more ducats to get it into your house. It is reserve list, of course. And it says, four blue, two generic enchantment. <sighs> Choose and discard a card. Tap or untap, target artifact, creature, or land. So why is this good? Why is this card something players should utilize? If you think about all the cards out there right now that let you draw a card, and you look at Mind Over Matter and realize the infinite loop possibilities of your deck construction, this card is a key piece for anyone who wants to either draw their entire deck or untap some said artifact, creature, or land to do infinite loops. And there's all these cards that let you tutor now to get this enchantment to sneak it onto the battlefield, to make things happen in a crazy commander build or vintage legacy decks that ignoring this card for less than $50, this costs half of what it used to cost and it's still falling. Again, it's that card you should be paying attention to because if it falls back down to the $30, $35 level, I think that's the time where players can say, you know what, for 35 bucks, yeah, why not? Why not get this and go with a few of the other cheap cards to make some kind of early form of commander deck you can build into or into a vintage legacy deck where you can try these things out. A card like this is not going to be the winning only card, but it can add to that loop factor of other abilities you're putting into your deck to make it more creative, more, more um, synergized with the right combinations. I think it's a great card to own if you don't own at least one copy. And as the price falls, it becomes a little more attractive to players. Now let's go ahead and check out their next card, okay? Here is Humility. This card stands on its own. The funny thing about this card is although it's been as high as like 100 bucks, ever since its increase in price in like mid-2020, it's never really fallen back down. I think people recognized how good it was. And because of how powerful creatures are now with power creep, this card has real staying power. So for a two white, two generic, each creature loses all abilities and it's just a 1-1 one, one creature. That is a phenomenally powerful card. Now, it does cost 4, which is, you know, a little bit high for most people. But again, there's ways of sneaking these enchantments onto the battlefield now. There are lots of ways of tutoring for them to make it happen. And the fact that this card is just a shy less than 50 bucks, it's still a pricey card for a lot of players. But it will continue to fall. Because after its last kind of, like, excitement buy... A lot of players have been ignoring this card. It hasn't really been bought a lot. It hasn't made any of my top 10 reserve list videos. It just kind of sits out there and players know it's there. They know it's decent, but they don't want to put out the money to buy it. They don't want to, they don't want to jump into that market space and spend that money because they're not sure exactly what kind of constructed deck they would build to make this go off. You'd have to buy a lot of other cards and sometimes that can be a very daunting task, which means the market demand for this card is kind of Always fairly constant, but never in high demand, which means the price won't shift as much as players need to really draw the attention to the card, which means you're going to have to kind of at least get into the $35 to $42 range before we're going to have some players actually kind of bite on the card. But you can always look for a moderate to heavily played copy. You can shop on TCG Player, check out your local LGS, see if they have this kind of card in there for you. I love the card. I own two copies, but that's all I need. I don't need 4, 10, or 12, or 20 copies. I'm not trying to speculate in that market space because this card has kind of a firm, 
underlying price that tells me it's not going to shift up or shift down. It's just going to kind of stay steady. Players who use it love to use it. It can be a real blast, don't get me wrong, but it's one of those cards that doesn't seem to jump anymore. It just doesn't sink either, so it's a middle ground. All right, now for our last card today, the last one I want to share with you guys is, oh, sorry, second last. There's one more after this. My apologies. Here is Wheel of Fortune. Anyone who doesn't know this card should know the card. This is a revised copy, and it is an expensive card. Don't get me wrong. This card for one red, two generic says, all players discard their hands and draw seven new cards. It has an average price of $279. This is like, you know, here in Canada, that's like 350 bucks Canadian. This is a lot of money. Now, the players buying these cards are usually players who have either traded in other tradable, expensive secondary market cards, you know, anything from Modern or from Commander. You got some Ragavans you don't need. You got some other cool cards. Esper Sentinel, you're like, I'm going to trade these in and work my way up to a Wheel of Fortune. That's fine. Owning at least one so you never have to buy it again is kind of like that, that holy grail moment where you're just like, oh, thank God, I, I got it. It's done. I own one copy. I'm fine now. And that's all you care about. So although you may not own this card yet, building up store credit, um, putting 20 bucks aside here and there until you finally work your way up to this card, because although it's expensive, I think the uses this card has in so many different formats and different play styles and different deck constructions more than pays for itself in the entertainment value going down the line. The only problem a lot of players have is the idea that the game eventually could die and you spent 300 bucks on a card that's now worthless. Well, it's only worthless if you sell it. And if you're going to play the card game for a long period of time, that's more reason to buy cards like this to get more enjoyment out of the ideas, concepts, and, and kind of creative moments you can have building with these cards. I think, I think it can be a hard thing to justify that price, but after you've bought it, at least you own it, you don't have to look back. I don't know where this card will go. I don't know about the museum quality of this particular card, but I know as a nostalgic player myself and the 30-year history of this game, this is one of those cards I'm never sorry I bought. But again, I never had to buy it at 200 plus dollars. I was buying mine at 15, 20 bucks, I think at the highest. So I'm not really one to really speak to that moment and say, this is a lot of cash. Do I need another copy right now? But I can understand why players do desire it and why the price is kind of staying where it is. So it has never really sunk down after the heights. Uh, and again, that price you're seeing for a thousand bucks, that's kind of like that BGS 9.5 copy that was, there was a couple of them that sold at that price range. Most were going for like 700 bucks and under. And right now you can see it's still falling. Look for a heavily played copy, even a damaged copy that'll look good in a sleeve, I guess, to save yourself a few bucks. But it is a great card to own. And I do recommend players buy at least one of these at some point or trade into it if you can. Now, the last card I want to share with you. This has been on old card watch videos in the past, okay? This we have here is Time Spiral. I'm just going to shift this over so we can get a little better look. Time Spiral from Urza Saga is a phenomenal card. It is continually falling in price. And again, I think this thing will eventually fall below sub 100. So what does this card do? Why would players want it? It's a cheaper form of time twister, number one. Yes, it gets exiled. But these cards from the Urza block, it says two blue, four other. Uh, you know, you, you exile it, you uh, discard your hands, you draw seven cards. But this one says, and unlike, unlike other time twister style cards, you untap the six lands. You get the lands back. So you've cast it. Everyone's discarded, but you will get to untap your lands to actually maybe utilize some of that mana available to do things with the cards you've just drawn versus other players who can't. It makes it a really fun card for players to own and have fun with, and it doesn't cost nearly as much as owning a Time Twister, but it's still on the reserve list. Now, for a card like this, if you're looking for it, I would actually shell out the extra money to go for a Near Mint copy just to keep the trade value high in case you desire to get rid of it at some point or if the market ever shifts and you can sell into an upswing in the market because markets like this go in cycles. We know it could be 5, 10 years. But if you bought it for under 100 and it goes back up to that 300, 400, you could sell into that market, make some money back off the enjoyment, wait for the market to die down, just like we saw with Sil Devi Digger and other cards of that like, and as the desirability of the card goes down after the FOMO's over, you could buy the card back just by keeping it on a list of things you know you want to look for and check in with all the time. Anyway, I want to wrap this up here. So let me just let me just remind you guys that these are just opinions of mine. They're cards I desire or I already own. Um, none of these ones are cards you need to have a lot of copies. You don't have to have dozens of copies of these. You don't have to speculate and wonder if they'll go up or go down. But if you're building with cards and building with deck ideas like these that you want to try out, 
some of these cards are really good prices right now and you can look and find moderately heavily played copies and save even more money on the ability to buy into them will there be greater deals later who can say you have to decide for yourself where you want to spend that money. But in my opinion, some of these cards and the playability factor really does kind of pay for itself. That entertainment value you'll get from using the real thing is amazing. Some people will argue for using a proxy, using a fake card. And I get that, but if you're ever going to a tournament or you go to a place that doesn't allow it, this just saves all those hassles, all those problems. And you know you've got something that could have some value later on. It may go up, it may go down, but the entertainment value will always be around. And that's pretty awesome. So thanks a lot for tuning in. Thanks for hanging out with me here on the Card Watch. I hope you guys enjoy the video. I hope you slam some comments down there and carry that conversation forward. And if you want me to research some cards and check some stuff out for you, hit me up, send me an email, alangathotmail.com. Always happy to check things out for you and put it into the next Card Watch video. Guys, thanks a lot for hanging out. Have a great day. And of course, a shout out and thank you to the fantastic patrons we have supporting the channel each and every day. Because of these wonderful patrons, this daily uploaded content is made possible. So thanks again. That support's amazing. You rock. Welcome back to the Ramble Jamble. I'm glad you guys made it. I'm glad you cleaned your rooms, got the chores out of the way, flipped the Necronomicon to page 616 just so you could check out what's going to happen. It was fun making the card watch video today. I enjoyed doing it. Put a boomstick in the comment section so I know you made it this far. Um, it is fun to do those videos. I wish they had more views to really warrant them to doing them all the time again, but the market's just not in that space. I'm throwing this one out there because we talked about it on the live stream. So it's kind of a bonus video. You're probably watching this in the evening when it came out, maybe the next day as a little aside. And I don't mind doing these once in a while. We'll see if they pick up again and people enjoy watching them enough to actually put some comments, put some views, some thumbs up. And we'll, we'll, we'll try things out, guys. That's what it's all about. It's fun to be here. And some of these cards, I just think they're at such a great price that's hard to pass up on, which is why it's so much fun to make those videos. It's crazy. Cheap cards. Who knew? Anyway, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for being here. Now, go back and clean something. Just go clean.